All right, so I just picked up the small HD Indy 7 for my Komodo and I absolutely love it. So in this video, we're gonna check it out. Now, when I first started looking for a monitor for my Komodo, I thought the seven inch was gonna be a little bit too big. Now I've been using the original Focus 5, which is this guy over here, and I've been using this on my Sony's, and they were plenty big for the type of work that I was filming. Now to be completely honest, I thought I'd just upgrade to the five inch Focus, but the SDI version when I got my Komodo. But after rigging out the Komodo, when I placed that little five inch on there, for size comparison, it looked pretty small in my opinion. So that's when I began to explore the bigger options. Okay. Anyway, I thought if I want to keep that small footprint, you know, the Komodo's quite small, I'll just take all the stuff off it, and if I really want, I'll just use my iPhone for a monitor. Now, because I'm going to be investing a fair bit of money into this monitor, I did have a look at my other options, and I had a look at the Atomos, I had a look at the port keys, uh, but being a small HD owner for years, I've just become so accustomed to the small HD interface, and just how easy it is to navigate through the menus. Now, I'm not saying that Atomos doesn't have good menus or port keys isn't good, but I'm actually just so used to small HD that I can get to where I want just super quick. All right, so when it comes to the Indy 7, it's packed in this black sealed box. Inside the box, you're gonna find a seven inch monitor. A quick start guide and a small HD microfiber cloth. All right, so looking at this monitor, it's a 1080p display, it's super sharp for checking focus, and it's a thousand nits. It's also housed in this really nice anodized aluminium chassis, and it follows on the same approach as the five inch OLED uh, with that bezel-less design, which doesn't just look nice, but it's also really handy for cleaning. And honestly, it was pretty painful cleaning the five inch because a lot of dirt and dust would get into those corners. Like it's just, it's hard to get them out after that, but with this, you just it's easy to clean. All right, so now looking at the bottom of this monitor, you're gonna find all its I.O., uh, which I think is a way better design from before. So all your cables are not like sticking out the side that you could risk knocking them. All right, so looking around the monitor, you've got your SDI in, you've got your SDI out, you've also got your HDMI in and HDMI out, and this is super handy for daisy chaining multiple monitors, uh, for using it for a wireless monitor that you can give to your director, or just because you wanna be a knob and plug in another monitor so you look like you're a pro. Now you've got your DC in, and that's for connecting to your V-mount or to an AC power. You've got a micro USB port, and you've also got two hot swappable slots for your NPF batteries. Now you're also gonna see plenty of mounting options on this. So you've got one on the side, one on the other side, and one down the bottom. Um, and this is for attaching accessories or just attaching your monitor to your camera. Now at the top, you're gonna find your power switch, which actually illuminates when it's on as well as your headphone jack and your SD card slot for you know, loading LUTs or something like that. Now let's talk about the UI. Honestly, Small HD's UI, so user interface, is amazing. I love the way that they've laid it out using pages and how you can just so easily pretty much customize anything to suit your needs. Plus they're regularly doing updates and they're improving their software. For me, being able to flick across pages just by using a quick swipe to check your exposure, for instance, and then you swipe back again and you can see your image is, I think, a huge advantage and saves me, honestly, it saves me so much time on set. Like, you're not having to go through and fumble to find exposure assist or something. Now, one of the other features that I love is it's got focus sharpening. Well, it's called focus peaking, but I like to call it focus sharpening. So I rarely use focus assist anymore. Having the ability to check focus using their sharpening feature honestly makes getting critical focus just such a breeze and unlike the focus assist, it doesn't distract me from seeing what's in my frame. So let's have a quick look over some of the included tools that we have available. All right, so on the side here is where you're gonna be adding all your tools. So for instance, I wanna add in a crosshatch and what I'm gonna do is add to this page and now you can see you can, it's, it's really good for rule of thirds. What I like to do is normally change this uh, to a yellow. Now you can change it to any color that you want and you can change the opacity of that. It's super bright. The other tools that I like to use is uh, exposure assist is another one. So this is set at ARI or ARI. What, I don't even know how to say it, whatever. But you can change it to spectrum, which is what I've got it on. And I like to have it as ignore look. You can also show the IRE scale 
and you can change where that guide is. So if you want it down the bottom, you want it in the middle, on the side, you can change the intensity of it as well. So you can also go in and you can add zebras. So you can change your max IRE as well. Another one of my favorites is the waveform. So let's add to this page. And what I like to do is make it full screen. So you can change the layout, go to full screen. And then what you can do is you can change the opacity as well, depending on what you, how you like it. So I normally have it right down. And now you can kind of see just as a quick look of what's overexposed in your image or what's not, what's underexposed. And it does it over the whole screen, so that really makes it really easy for me. Like you can get just keep stacking. So over here you got your histogram, waveform, vector scope. Then over here you got your focus assistant peaking. Let me show you peaking because this is a really great tool, peaking. So let's add it to the page. I love this for checking my focus, and I generally keep it on the whole time. So let's go into that. Now I change my intensity to normally I sit it around 19, 20. Let's go to 20. And I like to put my contrast up to 5. But you can change it to whatever you want. Like this is not actually baked into the image. It's just so you can see and helps, it help, really helps you pull focus. And you can see that, I'm not sure if you can tell on the monitor, but when I'm looking at it, it's super easy to pull focus now. Um, the other thing you can do is you've got the looks, the image overlay, audio meters. Um, let's have a look at the look. So let's add it to this page. What I've done is I've got an SD card installed on the top here and I've got my LUTs all installed in there. So let's choose a LUT. Let's go to our SD card and let's go down to teal and orange because that's one that I normally use. Let's go to Marston. And here you can change the intensity of it as well. So 70%. Now that's what I normally keep it on, 70%. But you can just do whatever you want. Like it's just really going to help you get a good idea of what the image is you know, going to look like. And you can easily just toggle that on and off. You can really just do whatever you want with this monitor. You can stack as many as you want on top of each other. You can keep them all on. You know, it's, it's really intuitive like that. You just do whatever works for your workflow. Now, the other cool function I like about this is you can actually swipe. And I've set it up as a swipe to, to check my exposure. Because sometimes it can, get, can be a little bit fiddly if you're you know, having to press these little buttons here. Like it can be fiddly if you're trying to check your exposure quickly. So because I'm using that function a lot, I've got my exposure assist on this page. And it's just done with a quick swipe. And here you can see where you've got um, the different I IRE the RE of your skin tones and then if you swipe across again you can see that I've added another page which has got my waveform on it and you can just keep adding pages to add more pages you just hit down and you can see these are all the pages that are installed at the moment and that I like to use some of them are the ones that small HD have pre-installed on there um, so you can see this is my custom one DK and then when I scroll across is my exposure assist and then if you swipe all the way to the left again Let's go through all our different pages here. So when you get all the way to the start, this is your dashboard. Now I've got it plugged into my Komodo, so it's coming into SDI. And then if you swipe across to the left again, this is where you've got um, all your settings. So here is where you can change your uh, status display to show like what, how much battery you've got left. So what you could do is, I'm gonna put it up the top, and I'm gonna say for it to show frames and seconds as well. And you can show the battery voltage meter or you can get it to show the percentage. And then you've also got things like your backdrop, you can get it to auto recover from power if one of your batteries dies. Um, there's so many things in here that you can go through and change. So up here you've got your feed, and you've got your input configuration, you've got your color part, you've got your output, um, whether you're outputting to HDMI or SDI. Then you've got your backlight. Now I've got mine set right down, because otherwise it's gonna be blown out for you guys to see. And then you can also calibrate this monitor, also change the appearance, so you can up the sharpness if you really want to. And then under the controls you've got your headphones, and that's if you've got your headphones plugged at the top, you can change the volume level there. Now you've got it to also image rotate, so if you want to turn the, turn the um, screen around or you want to turn it upside down, you can get it to auto rotate, you can get it to auto mirror. Um, then you've got image capture here, so this is really handy for me if I'm recording one of my YouTube videos and I want it to be the camera to be right back in the same place I just capture this here and I just you know if I've moved my tripod or I've moved my camera I can just use this and it'll give a little overlay so I can make sure that I've got it correct again now the other cool feature is um, you can actually tap to zoom so that's another cool thing that is part of that small HD thing so all, to, all you got to do to tap to zoom is just like using your iPhone you just 
just pinch in and you can really just nail your focus there. All right, now if you're interested in how I set up my pages and my menus, let me know down in the comments and I'll make sure that I make a little tutorial on that. While you're down there, don't forget to hit like, subscribe. All right, so the Indy 7 is a thousand nits bright. Now, that's pretty bright for me. So, you're probably asking, what is a nit? Well, I looked it up on Google for you and it said one nit equals one candela per square meter. Yeah, I know, I'm thinking, what the hell is a candela? Is it a candle or something? Because, I don't know, do you know? Let me know in the comments. How I understand it is, a nit is a measure of brightness. Now, whatever we look at, like our phones, for instance, or monitors, laptops, those type of screens, brightness, are measured in nits. So for comparison, my iPhone 11 is 625 nits at max brightness, at least Apple tells me this. The Indy 7 is 1000. So for me, I think this is plenty. Now it's not as bright as some of the other competition, but for me, 1000 nits is enough for the things that I shoot. I mean, if you're outdoors a lot, it's gonna be a bit hard, but I shoot weddings and the majority of them are outside in the hot Aussie sun. And I've been using the Focus 5, which is, I believe, 800 nits. And to be honest, I've still got by. If I really need to, I just chuck my jacket over my head just to remove those reflections. But I've only done this once because it messed up my hair. By the way, I really need a haircut, I know. It's getting really big. When it's bigger than my forehead, I know that that's the time that I need to go get a haircut. But we're in COVID and I can't go to the hairdresser, so what do you do? Anyway, if you like this video, don't forget to like it. It actually makes a difference. Don't forget to subscribe. Turn on the bell icon so you're notified when I post my future content. Okay, I love you, bye. Okay, I'm not wearing pants, I know, but I'm in my own house. Leave me alone. It's my own house, do what I want.